rip it on the dotted line. Let's fill it out for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! I've been praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. I some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. What are the terms our American spy presents to us? Sir, with all due respect, this is an unacceptable risk. Should I pose as John Anderson as he suggests and be captured, I'll not be treated as a prisoner of war, but as a spy. And as you know, sir, captured spies are hanged. Dearest Mother, the war for our independence ends its fifth year with the Americans losing in the South. The British took Charleston and with it over 5,000 American soldiers. From his stronghold in New York, British commander General Clinton controls the coast. Only the fortifications at West Point stop him from using the Hudson River to cleave the states in two. General Washington tries valiantly to gain ground in New York, but we are at a stalemate. To make matters worse, there is constant talk of spies. Just the other day, James told us of his conspiracy theory. Sarah! Uh, James says there's only one explanation as to why things are going badly for General Washington. And what might that be, James? Spies. Spies? What proof of that could you possibly have? What happened when General Washington planned to attack Sir Henry Clinton in New York? Nothing happened. Exactly because of Clinton's sudden countermoves that could only have taken place if the English had secret inside information. Makes sense to me. If James were correct, which I hope he is not, the spy would have to be someone in a trusted position close to General Washington. And I cannot imagine who could be so disloyal to such a noble person and such a noble cause. husband, the hard-working commander of West Point. All thanks to being wounded in the service of America and never rewarded for it by Congress. When Congress sees fit to investigate me while rewarding the likes of General Gates, they corrupt the ideals of the revolution. I'm so excited about the story I am covering. General Benedict Arnold, the hero of the Battle of Saratoga, is in command of a strategically important West Point. So? So, I was there at Washington's headquarters when he got command. Benedict, I have great news. I would like you to take command of the left wing of my army. It is too great a prize for one as unworthy as I. Nonsense. You earned it. There is no general more valiant leading his men in the field of battle. I cannot, as much as I wish to, accept so high an honor. I am afraid the old wounds will not allow it. My leg is too bothersome to allow me to ride, much less endure the hardships of battle. You are too good a friend, Benedict, and too valuable a general to be wasted in Philadelphia. Perhaps I could serve in another capacity, one less strenuous than a field command? I can't think of any. West Point. <clears throat> Excuse me, General, it's just the command of West Point is available, and you yourself have spoken of its importance. True, with it we control the Hudson River and keep the British bottled up in New York City. Lose it, and the British are free to travel the Hudson River. Then I'd best put my best general in charge to secure the fort and the war. The job is yours. You do me a great honor. Let's see. A story about Benedict Arnold sitting around commanding a fort, 
versus one about spies on Washington's staff. At least my story isn't a figment of my imagination. We'll see what you think after I get back from talking to Colonel Livingston. When spies write messages, they do it so only other spies can read it. How? Oh. Sometimes they use invisible ink. Oh, I love invisible ink. It shows up when you heat it. Right. Others use a piece of paper with holes in it. See? If you read only the words you can see in the holes, you get the secret message. Sometimes they write their message in coded numbers that refer to a specific page, sentence, and word in a book. The person who gets the coded numbers has a copy of the same book. Oh, so they use the numbers to find the words, and voila, it spells out the secret message. Mm-hmm. Then there is the mask letter. Anyone reading the regular letter doesn't know there's a secret message hidden in the writing. How does it work? Simple. The spy knows he's only supposed to read what he sees inside the cutout. In this case, an hourglass. Magnifique! But I will invent the unbreakable Henri code. Paper, paper. I need paper! Colonel Livingston. What do I know about spies? That's a good question. For one thing, I know they like to sneak back and forth across the no-man's land between our outposts and those of the English army. Who controls the no-man's land? Two groups from opposing sides. The cowboys for the English and the skinners for the Americans. They sound scary. They say they're helping our cause by intercepting suspicious persons who might be coming into New York. I'd like to meet these skinners. Maybe I can learn something about spies from them. Personally, I think they're most interested in stealing money from travelers. But if you're determined, I'll give you a pass for safe passage. What's this gibberish? Excusez-moi, I was practicing my secret code. General Washington, I expect you're pleased to have Benedict Arnold command the fort at West Point. Yes, if only I had ten more Benedict Arnolds. Maybe then I could overcome British advantages of manpower and supplies in the South. With all respect, sir, you seem worried. It is my job to worry. But no more of it, for I insist you join me for breakfast at General Arnold's house. It would be a pleasure. I've got to relax. I'm sure I will come across a Skinner before I meet a cowboy. So, Major Andre, what are the terms our American spy presents to us? One moment, please, sir. There, I finished deciphering the letter. Perhaps, General Clinton, you should read it for yourself. So, he wishes to meet you in person at Sheldon's headquarters in Lower Salem, with you disguised as John Anderson. Sir, with all due respect, this is an unacceptable risk. Should I pose as John Anderson, as he suggests, and be captured, I'll not be treated as a prisoner of war, but as a spy. And as you know, sir, captured spies are hanged. Yes, you're right. It's too hazardous. But if we exchange information with couriers at a slower pace, we increase the risk that the Americans will learn of our plans. Your spy must be in a hurry to be paid before that happens. He leaves us few options. I'd better go to meet him. But I will travel in my uniform. I will make arrangements for your passage and return on the Vulture this very night. Secret Henri Code! Colonel Livingston, I am almost finished! Want to try and break my secret code? Not now. We spotted an English ship on the river off Teller's Point. I ordered my cannon to fire when they get into position. <gasps> I'd say they're there! There! Away. 
Just an owl. Huh. Going somewhere? Uh, huh. Come, lads! We meet at last, Major Andre. Major General Arnold. I trust your journey was without peril? So far. Do you realize, sir, the dangerous position you have put me in by asking me to meet you here? You had better have a good reason for such an imprudent demand. Oh, I have many good reasons. After the American Congress failed to give me the promotions I deserved, they accused me of misusing their money. Perhaps it will make you feel better to know you shall be given a rank and commission in the British Army befitting a general of your talents. And the 20,000 pounds? Your new loyalty commands a high price. But we agree. Thank you. Sadly, I find myself deeply in debt due to some ill-fated business ventures and my wife's lavish lifestyle. My regards to your wife. I have not had the pleasure of seeing her since our occupation of Philadelphia. Ah, yes. Peggy never really lost her fondness for the crown and Mother England. She is not alone in her affection for His Majesty. There are a great many loyalists. And I expect there will be a great many more when they hear of my defection. We all know the war goes badly for the Americans in the South. I, for one, believe you British will be victorious, and I'd like to be on the winning side. May we get to the point? Every moment I delay increases the chances of my being discovered. Sir, I give you victory. These are plans for the fortifications at West Point, along with the placement of the troops under my command and my promise to further weaken the garrison by sending most of the troops to the countryside. Information I'm sure General Clinton will find useful when he attacks. Sir, a victory at West Point allows us control of the Hudson River and the chance to win the war by splitting the rebel colonies in half. Exactly. And you get? Everything I asked for. Who be ye? Loyalist or patriot? I'm a journalist from Ben Franklin's Pennsylvania Gazette. A journalist, huh? We don't see many of them out here. But you still didn't answer my question. I, I have a pass from Colonel Livingston. I'm looking for some Skinners? Why didn't you say so? We're Skinners. Phew. For a minute there, I thought you might be cowboys. Huh. For a minute, we thought you were a spy. And you know what we do to them. Major Andre. My ship, the Vulture, sailed without me. She was driven upstream by American troops. You shall have to return to the British lines by traveling over land. General, are you mad? I'm behind the American lines, your lines. No longer, when I gave you the plans to West Point last night, I would say that I officially switched sides. The point is, I'm wearing a British officer's uniform. How long do you think it will be before I'm spotted? Here, take this pass. This area is under my command. My signature will guarantee safe passage to you as American agent John Anderson. There are some civilian clothes piled on that bench. You can change into those. If I pose as an American in civilian clothes and am discovered, I'll be treated as a spy. It's your decision. Hmm. Though I fear capture dressed as an American, I fear the chance of being spotted in this uniform poses the greater risk. I think the plans to West Point are less likely to be spotted in this boot than in the pouch-bearing seal of His Majesty. So, how did all of you come to be Skinners? I mean, there are those who say Skinners are just bandits. We're here to hunt down cowboys or catch spies which we can't do with your continual jabbering. Shh. Do you hear that? Hear what? what? Now! After we shoot! I am a British officer. I trust you are cowboys loyal to the king and will let me pass. Well, you're wrong, Redcoat. We're Skinners, loyal to America. We're hunting cowboys and spies. 
Oh, well, I just said I was a British officer because I thought you were cowboys. By your Hessian jacket, sir. Oh, this? I was a prisoner a few days back. I grabbed it when I escaped. Actually, my name is John Anderson, and I'm an American. I have a pass signed by General Arnold. I'm not interested in your pass. I'm interested in where your money is. I thought you said you weren't bandits. We're going to see if he has any English coin on him. I mean, that'd prove he was an English officer, wouldn't it? I... I guess. Boys? <clears throat> hmm. A gold and silver watch, but no money. Check his boots. Gentlemen, there's no need to look... What have we got here? The way I read it, looks to be some sort of plan of West Point. You're a journalist. What do you make of it? These are the plans to West Point, all right. But what's he doing with them? Your suspicions were correct, Paulding. These are plans of West Point, and there appear to be notations telling how to render the fortifications useless. Paulding, I want you to take this man, these papers, and this message to General Arnold. I'm sure General Arnold can straighten this out. Not so fast. Jameson, am I to understand that this man was carrying plans of the fortifications at West Point? Yes, sir. You don't find that suspicious? I do. I want those papers sent with a message to General Washington that we are holding a man as a spy. Spy? If he's a spy, then he must be communicating with someone close to Washington. My theory. I was right. I pray your so-called theory is wrong. For if these papers were indeed written by Arnold's hand, then that would make Benedict Arnold a traitor as well. This is terrible. I've got to find Sarah. Gentlemen, please, have some breakfast. Aides to General Washington are always welcome at the Arnold breakfast table. She's right, gentlemen. I may be a general, but I never, ever argue with my wife. Thank you, Samantha. Ah, it's a message from Talmadge. Oh, and Samantha, please prepare some more food. General Washington and a guest will be arriving shortly. <gasps> Benedict, what is it? Something's come up, dear. We must talk upstairs. Gentlemen, if you'll excuse us for a moment. Quick, close the door. Benedict, what is... I must leave immediately. My life depends on it. Leave? Benedict, you're scaring me. I don't have time to explain. I gave the plans of West Point to Major Andre. What for? John's involved with you in something? Yes, he's been caught. It won't be long before Washington learns I've betrayed America to the British and they come to arrest me. This is terrible. What should I do? So you know nothing of any of this. Benedict! I love you, but I must go. Now. I'll be in contact. I'll do what I can to help. Good morning, General Arnold. General Washington has given me the pleasure of joining you. What's happened? It must have been the eggs in the pancake batter. There. I'm feeling better already. Why did General Arnold write off just now? Sarah! The spy has been telling the British everything? It's Benedict Arnold! <gasps> has betrayed us. Whom can we trust now? Selling the plants to West Point for 20,000 pounds. I want the army on marching alert. Bring all troops from the surrounding countryside to West Point and prepare to be attacked. Now we know why Arnold thanked Washington for command of West Point. He even spread our soldiers out to make them vulnerable to attack. All the lives he's jeopardized. All the people he's betrayed. General Washington who supported him. His men who died for him. And you, Sarah, you traveled with him. You respected him. I was inspired by him. He seemed so thrilled when I told him I'd become a patriot. I wonder if he'd already become a traitor. 
Is that what I am, James? A traitor to my country? This is your country. Why is it noble for me to turn to the American side, but evil when he defects to the British? You did it for liberty. Arnold did it for money and ambition. And he didn't care who would suffer or die so he could get them. Yes, I did it for liberty. And I write for liberty too. I've written many stories for the Gazette about General Arnold. And now, James, for liberty, I shall write another. We have all been betrayed by Benedict Arnold. Those of us who knew of him, and those of us who knew him. Follow me to victory! Some think the treachery of such a great soldier will cause us to lose heart and give up a fight. But I know it will not, because we do not fight for Benedict Arnold. We do not even fight for George Washington. We fight for freedom. And that cause is bigger than any man. secret letter code that General Washington can use. And the British won't be able to figure it out? Nope. Regardez. See? Just an ordinary letter. Now watch. You just read what isn't covered by your hand. Isn't it amazing? It's amazing, all right. There's just one problem. What if the person trying to read your coded letter has a bigger hand than you? Like mine. Dear, I am a pest? Oh. I didn't think of that. Yeah! <laughs>